Hey everybody, it's Christina. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on project number two for our Cards and Crafts Valentine's Day series. And today we're going to be working on making a tumbler using vinyl and our Cricut machines. I have these frosted tumblers, which actually this particular tumbler can be used for sublimation. If I wanted to print onto it, I could do that. But we're going to use it for vinyl today because I know not all of you have um, the ability to do the sublimation process. So I thought doing a vinyl project would be a lot of fun. So I have this tumbler. It's got the lid. It's like the Libby style tumblers. And it has also a glass straw too. So we have that here. I already went ahead and downloaded a design from designbundle.com and picked out what I wanted to use. I did a test cut of it and realized it just had a little bit too much detail for what I wanted to do. So I edited it a little bit and it took out some of the more intricate die cuts. And I'll give you a picture here on the screen so you can see what it looked like before I did my editing. And now we're going to go ahead and cut it out and get it ready to go. So I am going to start off with putting some vinyl. I am using Smart Vinyl. I have black vinyl that's shiny, but I wanted to use something that was more matte. And the only kind I have is the Cricut Smart Vinyl. So I'm going to use this. It's actually meant for the Cricut Maker, and this isn't even a full 12 by 12 piece. So it is going to have to be put onto a mat since I'm using my Cricut Joy today. I am going to line this up in the corner, just making sure that it's on my mat. And as long as it's pretty close to the side over here, that is all I need. I'm just going to take my brayer here and make sure that this is on my mat really good. Once it's sent over to my machine, all I have to do is just start to load it and the machine's going to recognize it and pull it in. While this is cutting, I'm going to go ahead and take a lint-free cloth. This is just a blue shop cloth and some rubbing alcohol, which I have in a spray bottle. It's going to spray it right onto my cloth. And I am going to wipe down my cup here just to get any dust or lint or anything like that that's on it. Especially after having all the renovations done in my room, there is still dust everywhere. Even though I think I got it all, it's still around the space. Okay, so that is all done cutting. I'm just going to move my machine out of the way. And there we go. So what I'm first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this out a little bit so it is not quite the full piece. And then I can save my scraps for another project. Just want to make sure I don't cut into my design at all. Now, if you've never worked with vinyl before, what we're going to do is weed our project. Weeding the project is simply removing either the letters and leaving the outside piece or removing the outside piece and leaving your letters. The only time you ever want to remove the actual design is if you're going to use this as a stencil, but I'm not using it as a stencil. So we're just going to go ahead and pull out the background of our design. So I'm just taking my picky tool and just going to grab it in the corner here and start peeling back. I like to peel at an angle. That's the best way that you can leave your design onto your backer piece. So this back part right here is your backer piece. And as I'm pulling, I'm just going to hold on to my pick tool here and help along anything that needs help. Like up here at this M, I probably, oh, it came out fine, but sometimes you get to spots that will need your help. So when I go around this curve here on my S, I just want to kind of grab that with my tool and that helps it come out a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and peel this all off, making sure that none of our letters get peeled off with it. Because I've done that before. I've peeled the whole thing 
go to apply it and then realize there's a whole letter missing. And it's usually because it's jumbled up in my piece of vinyl that is ready to go in the trash after I, review, after I have removed it. So I'm going to go ahead and now do the inside pieces of my letters. We just have to pull those pieces out. We don't want any of that being left behind. And I'm just pulling out all of these inside pieces. I'm sticking it on my hand. And I apologize for my hand here. I have, I burnt myself and I've been trying to let it air because I had it in a band-aid for the longest time. And yeah, so it's better for it to be a little bit in the air especially because it hurts when I, a couple of days ago, accidentally dried my hands just a little too roughly and made it a little bit uh, worse than it was. So there we go. I think I got all of the pieces out here. We just want to double check all of our letters, make sure we have all of the inside pieces. So that is our design. I double checked to make sure I got all the middle parts of our letters and we're all good to go. Let me just show you how I figured out how to measure and what size my project needed to be. So I have my Libby glass and this is an 18, I believe it's 18 ounces. I took my measuring tape and just went around the entire glass and found out that it was just about nine and a quarter inches. And then I also did the from top to bottom and that is just under five inches. I wanna say five inches because of the curve on the bottom and the curve on the top. So we, I went a little bit lower than five inches, but I'll put the exact measurements that I used when I was designing the um, design in Cricut Design Space so you know what size that I used. What I need to do next is add my transfer tape to my design. Now I went ahead and cut a piece of transfer tape already and I'm just gonna kind of drop it in the middle and let it spread out. That is how I do it. Sometimes I will, um, if it has a backing, you can bend the backing back, kind of work your way down. If you've ever done wallpaper before, that's uh, sometimes how you do it if you use contact paper. But this is just a low tack tape that will let me grab my vinyl and have it stuck to the tape and then transfer it over to my cup. So what I did was put that down. I used my scraper tool or my little squeegee, if you want to call it and made sure that I did a nice, um, making sure that it's nice and burnished down. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the back side too. Back. Now the Cricut vinyl, the Smart vinyl especially, has a much thicker backing and I find it really hard to peel the vinyl off. So I'm hoping this goes smoothly, but we may be a little bit on the struggle bus trying to get this off. So the best way to do this, and I already see that some of it's already not coming off, so I'm gonna start in one corner and just slowly peel back. But what I don't like about the Smart Vinyl is the backing is so thick and I find it really hard to roll because that is usually how I do it. I roll my backing and make sure that it, that my vinyl will stick to the transfer tape. So we might be in luck. And I may just jink myself by saying that, but let's see how we do. So I have one that needs to stay down. Doesn't want to stay. So let's hope that we peeled the rest of this off, leaving all those hearts where they need to be. And all of our little letters, oh, we got a couple hearts that are sticking to the backing and not to the transfer tape. So we'll just give this a good varnish on the back. There we go. All right, so that took a little bit of work to get that off there, but we did finally get it off. Okay, we're still gonna need our little scraper tool here. I have this little rubber um, 
cup holder. I got it on Amazon and it's great for doing something like your cups. It has a little bit of an angle so your glass is not sitting like perfectly flat which I really like so it's kind of tilted towards you and it's a great holder and works as your third hand when you're trying to work with vinyl. So I'm going to use that to at least get my vinyl started and then I can take it off the holder and continue wrapping it around. So I'm just going to, before I even put this down, I think what I'm going to do is trim this up a little bit so that it's a little easier for me to see, especially because this uh, transfer tape doesn't have lines in it. So we just want to make sure that we're not um, going too far onto the curve of our cup. So I'm going to start just by putting this down. I'm also going to do the top and then one of the sides. So I'm going to try to get as close to the top as I can without cutting any of my vinyl. That's just to keep it so I can see the top and the bottom much better of my glass. Because I'm working with two frosted pieces. My tape is frosted and my glass is frosted. So we're going to... That is so much easier to see. I'm going to start by just laying this down. I'm going to wrap one side and then I'll come over with the other side. And our sizing was perfect. So it's going to meet up nicely in the back here. So I'm going to use my scraper. We're going to now transfer our vinyl onto our glass. So I'm just going to make sure everything is nice and here down. I want to make sure all of our vinyl is here down. There's no bubbles. And one thing with vinyl, um, especially on glassware, or anything like that, you don't want to put this into the dishwasher because your vinyl will come off. You do want to wait at least 24 hours. I used a permanent vinyl, so you want to wait about 24 hours and then you know it's on there really well. It just takes some time for it to cure onto the glass. So I'm going to start peeling this off and I'm just going to again doing everything at an angle uh, helps with things staying in place a little bit easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and start peeling this off. And I can already tell I'm already in love with this. Isn't that awesome? So we're just going to keep peeling this back. We have one heart that's trying to come with us. So we're just going to kind of push that into the glass. There we go. Again, I like to go really slow. That's how I know that Everything is going to stay adhered down. One little area here that's got a bubble in it. You can get that in a second. And there we go. How adorable is that? I love it. That came out really nice. So I see a couple areas that have a bubble, especially in the larger letters of the love. So I'm just gonna use my fingernail to kind of push them in place. But that, those are the only two actually had one right here in the O and then one on the L. But that worked out really well. So then I have my little topper there and then I have my glass straw, which I love that it's a glass straw. That's pretty, it's pretty nice. Just as long as you don't drop it. Little rubber stopper in there so we can put our straw in and there we go. How cute is that? So that's another cute Valentine's Day project. You can definitely fill this up with some candies. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some dark chocolate in here for my husband for Valentine's Day. And then he can have this um, at his desk, either here at home or at work. So I hope you enjoyed this second video in our Cards and Crafts series. The playlist for this series is down below in the description of the video. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!